Wow, you're the first person who's ever had a um a glam HM team <laughs> over here. Wow. A glam team. Let me look. Look in the camera. Is there too much glare on her glasses? Yeah, what yeah, do I do? I think you need to take them off, baby. Really? Yeah, I think you might need to. Yeah. Or what do you think? How There's, do you feel? Yeah, if I sit over here at the table, am I hidden? Oh yeah, yes, you but you know what's so great about that? Maybe you could peek in. Yeah, I'll peek in. You know, people, yeah. you were one of my most watched videos. Really? You know, yeah, you're at the top of the thing. Oh, this is my fee though, like, huh. I completely forgot about the comments. Oh yeah, uh, no, like that's Two fine. days ago it hit me. Oh, everyone has such nice comments. Okay. Yeah, everyone on these are really nice. Guys, make sure you're kind nice. to this sweet little <laughs> Veronica. <laughs> but I just want to make sure I get this correct. You're the CFO at Partisan Records and Knitting Factory Records. Yes. I was literally listening to all of your artists on Spotify. Really? The other day. Yeah. I was like, I didn't even realize all of them are so cool. Who was your? Well, okay, wait. I'm going to be embarrassed to say. Cigarettes have to say. Yeah, yeah. yeah. That, was the, Don't be that was the most obvious one, correct? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Wait. The so new single, I what's mean, the it's new just like again? Pistol. Pistol. But okay. it's like one of those, like, on repeat. Yes. Kind of track. Who else do you love um, that you guys idols. represent? Okay. Yep. Fontaine's okay. DC. Yes. Do you get into that industry because you like the finance? Because you like the music? Like, which one comes first? So I got into it because, well, I started accounting. Okay. And I um, in Australia, guys. In Australia. Wait, Wanapong? Am I saying it wrong? <laughs> what's what, what's that? the university called? Uh, university. Oh, Wulung, university of Wollongong. Oh, Wollongong. Wollongong. Uh, Wollongong. Okay. Yeah. Wollongong. So. Yeah, the whole time I was getting my degree, my dream was to be in the creative industry. Okay. Um, so either fashion or music. Um, and then when I moved here, I realized that like music would probably be the easier avenue to like do this kind of work whilst being in a creative field. Yeah. So then when you're doing like all the accounting stuff for them, like do you see all the royalties that I do? Well, I prepare, things? yeah. So I'm, um, in charge of that entire department. So okay. um, I used to do everything from preparing the statements to delivery. Now I have like a couple people underneath me who help with the preparation and then I do the review process um, and then communicate with our bands that they're gonna receive a statement soon and um, yeah. And then it's Wait, delivered. that's amazing. All right, I'm also gonna lower this a little bit. I'm so curious then, like how has the streaming industry like shifted or not shifted that? Cause like I, mean, I think of like as an actor, right? like residuals are kind of where you usually made more of your money just because it's like ongoing and you consistently are collecting like a check. To but streaming changed it. Totally. And also like overheads in regards to streaming are like nothing compared to the physical business. Um, so it's like always important for us to be looking at the two businesses separately um because but our so for us particularly we have bands that um are very physical heavy still so we we still place a lot of importance in that part of the business i think where like 30 to 40 percent of our business is still physical vinyl records and then wait the, really yeah Oh, I thought and you meant like physical, 60. like like a concert. Okay. No, no, you no. Mean no. Like so, an actual like right. vinyl. Yeah. Or, okay. And then the remainder is like streaming revenue, so 60, 70 percent streaming. I never realized that there was that many people who were still buying vinyls. I guess they I were think, much cooler than me. <laughs> I think that it's just unique to like the top three bands of ours. I'm not sure if that's common. Okay. Like globally. But I do feel like maybe it also is because the people that you represent are kind of indie, cool, and hip. Yeah. So maybe, like, that's also And also, where... like, we have... Their fan bases are a little older, so I think that helps. Oh, what There's, are like, the a culture. Um, oh, man. I don't want to, like... <laughs> I don't want to stereotype. <laughs> well, like, <laughs> yeah, maybe not. I can't, I can't stereotype. But okay. at least with, like, Idols and Fontaines, their fans are buying their music on vinyl. And how much yeah. are vinyl these days? Like $25, $30 okay. and up. Are yeah. CDs still a thing? I don't even know. They are, surprisingly. Wait, really? Yeah, Do I'm not think... a CD person, but we ha still have not stopped manufacturing. I couldn't even play a CD if I I don't, I couldn't either. To. Wait, I'm so curious then. Do we think that CDs are going to be what vinyls are? Like, do you think they're going to eventually I be, don't like, think... cool again? I think that... 
slowly they are, but I don't know if they'll reach that like, level of a comeback. Yeah. Um, they're also just a lot cheaper to manufacture, so I hope that they do make a comeback and yeah. take over again. Wait, so do they have concerts? Like, are mm -hmm. there a lot of concerts, like, in New York? Like, yeah, I mean, some together? yes, Tuesday night. Yeah, what? Um, <laughs> I'm not going. Oh, I can't go He's because going. we have that drink thing. Oh, God okay. damn it. Well, you could come to the after party. I like Don't after parties. Yet. Wait, okay. Um, but Blonde Shell is playing Mercury Lounge. Um, uh, it's going to be a, a big deal show. Um, I mean, this year, touring has um, restarted, I guess, after the pandemic. So, And it's, like, important for our bands. Like, it's a mar it, it helps us because it is, like, a marketing tool. But that's um, usually where bands make the most money. Did you always know that you wanted to move from Australia to the United States? I didn't actually. So I traveled here. Our little on set <laughs> photographer over here. <laughs> I, I traveled here for a month after I graduated from uni. Okay. And on that trip, I met my future ex-husband. Okay. Um, and that's Wait, it was what, on that trip? Yeah. And is that like kind of what pulled you yes, here then? Yes, absolutely. Because I was pursuing like becoming a chartered accountant in Australia and um, yeah, then I met this person and wow. okay. yeah, <laughs> I mean, he got you here for the this one exactly, later on. Exactly. All right, it all works um, out guys. Yeah. Do you feel like culturally there's like a lot of differences between Australia and here? Um, and like, if so, how? Yes, I would say where my family is based in Australia, it's very, um, a, it's like a, little metropolitan it's like after Sydney it's got it's got quite a large population but okay. growing up like I didn't know any other queer children so I had no idea that I was queer until like moving to New York and figuring my identity like I came out at 30 which is like extremely late um but I just wasn't exposed to like that lifestyle when how interesting I, grew up. I pretended to like have crushes on boys and do you remember like pretending oh totally or just like not i thought i was being authentic yeah. like it wasn't like very consciously like i don't think this human being is cute but like feeling like it was more performative than genuine wow. and it was obviously it wasn't until later on in life that i realized how ingenuine those behaviors and feelings were so then did it like blow your mind like when you came to the realization that it was oh okay? yeah it, yeah i mean i i behaved i think like a teenager like i behaved as as if i should have behaved when i was like 16. good old, you know <laughs> i don't know if it's been and at the age of 30 31 than New York, but though, exactly, so. <laughs> exactly. Like, oh man wait i love that though. yeah i mean it kind of then makes you realize how many people in life like might never have Oh, totally. I think that if I didn't that leave that town, there's a very good chance I would never Which is kind have of discovered that part of myself, or it would always have been, like, there were moments in the back of my mind as I was getting older and noticing certain, like, calls to various people and, and thinking just, like, well, everybody feels this way. This isn't anything. And then when I met my ex-husband, it was like, Oh, I'm not queer. Thank God. Like genuinely, that was my response to it because wow. I was not necessarily raised in an environment where it was accepted. So um, it was actually a relief, and I was like, "Oh, I have nothing because, to worry about." Because you were attracted to him, obviously. Yeah, exactly. And, like loved him and as I, a human. And absolutely. And, yeah. yeah. And I like. Yeah. Felt deeply in love and. Um, and we did have a great marriage. It was just, um, you know, he that relationship was very supportive in me becoming, like, who I am. And I think that from that, like, back, you know, I ended up, you know, learning a lot more than I ever expected to learn. Well, if that makes sense, I'm not sure if that was... You almost, like, left your hometown for this man yeah but like that ended up like really showing you the way totally. in your life and like opening up an entirely different way yeah and i do have things. yes and i do have that relationship to thank yeah. for it and him to thank yeah. for it because he was extremely supportive in like my self-discovery 
the time. So yeah. That's amazing. Yeah. Oh my god, I love that so much. I didn't even realize we were gonna go there. Again. I know, you're not and I love it. Like, <laughs> but I feel like no, the reason why it's so nice is because I feel like so many people who watch videos like this, I don't know, it's just always nice to know that you're not totally. the only one, you know? Right. And it's so interesting that I'm sure a lot of people have thoughts like that and are maybe scared to make, you know, to come out in that way or to express themselves in that way. So right. I feel like it's great to talk about. Yeah. Because I feel like the more we talk about it, the more normalized it is, as Absolutely. it should be, you know what yeah. I mean? So it's like, yeah. I, think I mean, it's right. and I think like you said about New York, it, it is extremely normalized, but it's still leaving New York and, and going home and, um, it's, it's not like I have to pretend to be somebody else, but I just feel there's like, it's like I have to pull back slightly oh, no, no, no. on like, yeah. When you guys go home, do you feel like you can't be as like affectionate? Right. Or... So like Lourdes will tell you, even in public, I was like, here, I'm always like, we're holding hands no matter what, we're like yeah. kissing in public. And there it was, especially being the first time that I brought like a female mm -hmm. like relationship home with me. Um, I was like extremely nervous. Like it wasn't comfortable doing it. Um, Do you remember that? Yeah, I mean, I I felt it less because I care less. Do you want to write? Sure. Yeah. <laughs> Let's add to the party. <laughs> Only for a sec. I don't want to hijack. Yeah. Hi. 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 Um, um, okay, wait, this is great. So you felt it when you went to Australia? Though. I mean, you know, I think that's like a normal thing that queer couples have to do when they travel anywhere. Um, you kind of have to clock how you, f like, what the sense of wherever you are is, mm -hmm. you know? Like, when we went to Italy, we love Italy. We would love to spend all our time in Italy. But, like, we were definitely like, well, let's not hold hands here. Let's not. Really? Yeah, because you can just tell when some place is more conservative than another, and you just don't want to, like, bring that energy energy the attention the comments it's just like even oh, yeah. if it's benign it's just a little stressful to have mm -hmm. to engage that um obviously i would say i felt that less in australia certainly not in sydney sydney was great um but in the suburbs in general i feel like you're just a little more right your guard it's not unique to australian no. suburbs it's uh, no unique to suburbs i do remember when you guys were saying you were looking at like places to go on vacation like there were certain places that like online are like do not go here yeah. if you are yeah. queer. we were was it the caribbean we were yeah we thought about going to the caribbean yeah. and we were like oh we can't <laughs> we can't see that there's like, whole articles <laughs> describing yeah. that it's we amazing. went to puerto rico puerto rico yes. yeah puerto rico was incredible <laughs> puerto rico was amazing very queer friendly <laughs> um all right i'm gonna okay Peace. Wow, I really love to read this little combo. Oh, yeah. okay. You know, I am very grateful that I work in a company that is very accepting and um, diverse and, and in its hiring process is always like striving to be better in mm -hmm. that way. Um, so I have, it's like another area of my life in New York that I just, I, you know, no person that I've ever had a professional relationship with has ever made me feel less than yeah. okay another thing i want to say because i do remember stalking your linkedin and seeing the thing and lord has just reminded me of it but your animal activism oh yeah um that's on your yes, LinkedIn page too i am a huge to advocate for um advocate against cruelty to animals um so when i used to have a car i would travel a couple times a year to the catskills animal sanctuary and volunteer there for a day and stay at the homestead and um, I mean, I like, I regret not having kept that up, but it's just like hard to get there without a car. Yeah. Um, but it's like a, yeah, it's, it's a very important to me to be involved in anything in relation to helping with the cruelty against animals. Oh my gosh, um, I feel like you see any of those videos for like two seconds and it makes you yeah, feel I can't, I can't. sick. Yeah. yeah. So how do you do that in like your daily life? Are there things like even like on makeup and stuff, making sure products? Yeah, so I won't use any products that I've tested on animals. Um, I'm vegetarian, mostly vegan. I mean, our house is a vegan household um, and what? donate to various organizations, except for me. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, I was like, Lord, is you? But my partner. <laughs> 
<laughs> I did not judge other people's um, behaviors. Tell them about how you stole Georgie. Oh yeah. So when I first moved here, like the first uh, extracurricular activity I decided to do was uh, my office is near Bark Shelter in okay. Williamsburg. So I was like, oh, I'll just start going there after work and help walk the dogs and like for an hour and bring them back. And there was this one morning and uh, they posted this picture on their Facebook page of, um, of her name was Oprah at the time. I changed her name after I adopted her. Um, but I, so I, I saw her and I immediately like, I called them and I'm like, I'm going to walk Oprah this afternoon. Don't let any of the walkers take her. Okay. And they're like, fine, fine. Um, so I went there and I took her and I fell in love instantly. Um, the cutest little, I, I'm also like obsessed with poodles. Okay. Um, like long legs, curly hair. So cute, yeah. Um, and I never took her back. And so I like, I just couldn't, it just broke my heart. Cause she, I don't know. There was just something about how can I like take you back there? The next day I went back to the shelter without her. And, what they and I was like, so I'm going to, um, adopt Georgie. And they're like, did you bring her, her did you bring her back yesterday? I'm like, no. <laughs> And they're like, you know you can't do that, right? And I was like, like well, oh yeah. just tell me how much I need to pay. Yeah. And it was like a hundred bucks to cover all her like That's injections. It. And wow. then the next day, cause like my home bath that I gave her wasn't enough to get that smell from the shelter off of her. So I went and got her professionally groomed and she looked like a brand new little baby. Oh, and, she um, probably was so happy. Yeah, all her hair was shaved and she uh, could see again because it was like all covered over, over her eyes. She had eye infections. Oh. Um, so yeah, I stole her from <laughs> the shelter. Oh, <laughs> That's yeah. the best story, I love it. <laughs> Just stealing dogs from yeah. shelters. Um, yeah. I love I'm it. Good. Thank you so much for doing of this course. with me. Oh, look at this lovely little home. Love you guys. <laughs>